Welcome uh, to the Donahue Group. We're glad you could join us again. We're having a lot of um, interesting conversation this month, uh, focusing pretty much just on the city of Sheboygan, in part because we're honored to have Mayor Juan Perez with us as a special guest. Thank and uh, welcome. We're delighted that you can be here. Glad to be here. Uh, Thank you. Also joining me, Cal Potter, former state senator, Professor Tom Paneski from UW Sheboygan, a um, uh, former alder person. And I often forget to introduce myself, but I'm the namesake here, Mary Lynn Donahue. Uh, former school board member. Former school board <laughs> member, and as I like to say, simple country lawyer. So um, we talked uh, last time, Mayor, uh, in, in some detail about the current financial structure of the city, where our money comes from, where it goes, what our debt limits are, and, and so forth. Um, and we went through a lot of charts that I, that I at least found quite interesting and pretty eye-opening. It was a kind of city finance 101 for me. Um, would you tell us a little bit about how the listening sessions came about and things that you heard, just lessons that you learned from those sessions? Well, as I said, we've, we've held 16 formal listening sessions. Those are, those are the listening sessions that I announced to the council I was going to have, one in the morning, one in the evening, uh, in, two in each district. And they were pretty well attended. I think a little under 400 people attended all of them. There were some regular ones that attended uh, every one of them or, or most of them, but every time they did, they came back with something interesting to say or some feedback they gathered from their neighbor or their friend. So, Overall, it, it was uh, very worthwhile and very well attended, and um, a lot of good ideas, some suggestions came out of them. And you've done some other sessions, too? Some other informal sessions uh, before Rotary West, Ro the Morning Rotary, uh, ARP. Uh, I will be doing uh, and I did some before Altrusa and mm -hmm. numerous others, and I'll be doing several. I think I've got three more scheduled to do. A total over, over 45 listening sessions. If you multiply that times two and a half, three hours apiece by the time you're out of there, a lot of hours. Yeah, so you, you talked a lot and you listened a lot. Just as I promised I would do. Yeah, what did you hear? Well, there's, you know, as you do the listening sessions, uh, we kept them to an hour minimum, uh, sometimes going over a little bit because after a while you keep hearing the same thing mm -hmm. being re repeated. Uh, but as we held the session, there's certain issues that kept bubbling up to the surface, uh, which are pretty interesting. And a lot of it had to do with public prote protection and safety. People really care and value their public protection and safety, but I don't think that they understood the cost involved with public protection and safety, and I don't think they understood the trade-off. Uh, by trade-off, I mean that the, the more you finance public protection and safety, because there's only so much money to go around, you almost have to unfinance something else, and they weren't quite sure how that happened, and when they understand that, then they almost seem to come back with the idea, well, how do we make it balance, how do we equalize it, just like you would with a family. Just like if you had three kids and a hundred dollars, you divided between all three of them equally. Mm -hmm. And that, that public protection and safety came up a lot. Transit came up a lot also interestingly and not surprisingly came up a lot. Uh, some issues dealing with, well, they're all, the buses are always empty, but people needed to understand certain things about the, the transit as it operates as a separate budget where the government pays 80% of, of our budget and the city subsidizes 20%. I call that a good deal because if you want to pay 80% of my mortgage, I'll let you. <laughs> you know, 20% for me is nothing. Uh, but I think what people needed to understand, and as we work through the process in the listening session, is that transit has evolved to a point in our society, and particularly in our community, where it's become a basic service. Mm -hmm. It doesn't need to pay for itself, just like police doesn't need to pay for itself. In fact, police doesn't pay for itself. Almost neither, nothing really neither does, does in fire. government, right? Neither does fire. Mm -hmm. uh, well, we have... Uh, uh, our inspections department pays for itself. Our, okay. city, our, our city clerk pays for itself okay. just by the amount of revenue that they generate. But people expect transit because it charges to travel to, to pay for itself and it's gotten to a point where it really doesn't need to nor, nor should we expect it because it's a basic service that we provide for the people in need. A comment was made, well, I never drive it. Well, I've never used the fire department either. But I've been paying for it. It's there as a basic service when you need it. Yeah. The, as I understand it, the listening sessions were part of what you're calling the citizens' budget process. Correct. I know there are other parts to it. Would you describe those? We have um, 
uh, website uh, uh, surveys mm -hmm. and uh, other ways for people who couldn't make it to the sessions to have input? Well, we have hard copies at, at City Hall. We have hard copies at the library. We, they can access our website and actually um, fill out the questionnaires, the survey uh, from there. Uh, we sent out surveys to every city employee. Uh, strongly recommended uh, the department heads suggest that employees fill them out. Um, unfortunately, only about 5% of our city employees actually filled out anything at all. Uh, reflects a very low response rate. Okay. Um, as I just for for those who may be listening and, and <coughs> wanting to um, uh, fill out these forms, first of all, as I understand, they ask some pretty basic questions, but important ones. One, what's important to you? Two, what does the city do well? Three, what does the city not do so well? and then for just any other comments that mm -hmm. people want to make. But it's also my understanding, if I'm correct, that these are completely anonymous uh, correct. reports if, if people mm -hmm. so choose. So Right. I think I believe the first question is, what are, what are the key issues facing Sheboygan mm -hmm. right now? And that gave people an opportunity to just touch on anything. Um, and, and then there were very, it's very, very basic survey, but it allows us the opportunity to collect some very worthwhile information mm -hmm. in terms of generalization and credibility. Uh, when we initially started, we hoped that if we get 100 people to respond or to attend, that would have been a, enough sampling to get enough generalization and credibility so we could r arrive to some good conclusions. Well, we over exceeded that by three times. Right. And I understand Jack Westfall, um, who's a great statistician and and uh, smart uh, man, smart man, poll, uh, poll maker, uh, uh, was of assistance uh, on a voluntary basis to the, the city and, and putting that together. And had so. he charges, the, the cost would have been anywhere between ten and fifteen thousand dollars for his services. All right. And he did that, that, that gratuitous. As, as part of these sessions, did uh, they express their uh, interest in public safety, the police and fire services? Did they were they willing to then pay the extra taxes to provide them? Did they say anything about that? No, in fact, one of the things that didn't work for Sheboygan, and when we talk about what worked and what didn't, one of the things that didn't work is excessive taxes and fees and assessments. That's what people just don't want. They want us to force ourselves to live within our means, which is basically what the state's telling us right now by capping our levy. You guys are going to have to figure out how you're going to spend your money and prioritize, severely prioritize exactly what it is you want. Um, the people don't, one of the things that wasn't working is excessive. People have seen their taxes go up increasingly up every year. And quite frankly, people are fed up with it. They just don't want to be taxed anymore. Yeah, so a, lot of, a lot of them today are, are mobile. They, they go to Florida. They go to other states. And they see uh, lower property taxes. They may not understand that those, those states are tourist havens with mm -hmm. liquor taxes and sales taxes and a lot of other revenue sources uh, that we don't have. Or states that have uh, oil and gas and coal. Mm -hmm. uh, they have sort of cash cows that Wisconsin is an energy-dependent state. Uh, state doesn't have. So as a result, uh, I often heard that when I was in the legislature, well, Florida doesn't tax this, or, or Louisiana, or Georgia, or whatever. They would go through a litany of states that they, snowbirds particularly, uh, would live in, and they said, well, you know, if they can do it, we can do it. But there really was a case of apples and oranges. Exactly. We, we really can't be compared to other communities no. because we don't have the same situation. And, and many times it's services, too. I, I've traveled enough to when you go through some communities, you see they have one traffic light. It's on a wire over the middle of the <laughs> over the intersection. They don't have these multiple uh, st standing uh, traffic lights, or they don't have curb and gutter. It's just a blacktop road, and if if it rains heavily, very few storm sewers. They just are at the mercy of what's going to come. Mm -hmm. And and I think uh, level of service. I think there's some of that. You know, we, you can blame the federal federal government for the hurricane fiasco, but I wouldn't doubt that. In many of those communities, the level of municipal service cannot hold a candle to what you would find if an emergency struck Sheboygan, in Wisconsin. You're absolutely I correct. mean, the police, the fire, the public works, the, the work ethic, um, as well as the equipment available and the response time and the teamwork and the preparation, all of those things are just first class here. And uh, it doesn't show its face until there is some type of emergency. Right. And you know, God forbid that whatever happened, but uh, it isn't tested. And so, as you, as I, like I said, as you drive through these states and you see no curb and gutter and you just see uh, no storm sewers and you see these... You can do that in cities in, in Wisconsin. Sure, sure. Uh, you know, and... But uh, Sheboygan was known for its concrete streets. You know, one of the first cities, I think, in the country to have concrete streets and, and storm sewers and, and all of the right. things that we do right. 
um, mm -hmm. it comes at a price. And just like we have a first class university system that yes. may not be first class for yeah. too much longer yeah. in terms There's of... There's going to be a, a, a certain amount of education that's going to have to occur with respect to the mm -hmm. public. A good example is that last storm we had Mm, yeah. Then, because I was up there after the storm with Chief Zire, uh, ch uh, fire chief, uh, doing a on-hand, uh, on-site uh, uh, evaluation of what had occurred. At that point, to those people, the most important thing was the police department. But at the same time, the most important thing was the fire department. At the same time, so was public works, because they were all doing what they needed to be done mm -hmm. to take care of the problem to protect our citizens, to make sure that they were that they were uh, safe and, and taken care of. So it, it's hard for people to, to understand that when you prioritize, you have to take away from one to give to the other, or you have to give it equally. That's very hard to do. That's the dilemma. That's, that's the challenge. How do we do that with the amount of money we have and keep everybody happy? Mm -hmm. I and wish somebody would tell me. Well, and of course, my, my theory has always been to start to think differently you know, when the way you do business is absolutely not working. And one of the questions I was going to ask, which is a little unfair, is, you know, what would a good budget look like to you at the end of this whole long process? And maybe there is no such thing as a, as a good budget because it'll involve a lot of sacrifice and cuts and so forth. Um, let's well, the, think about how that, we do business. The way a good budget looks now is with that 3.339% that we're allowed to increase our levy without actually having to go to a referendum is that every homeowner for a $100,000 home is going to take a $50 hit again. That's the way it's shaping up. And that provided the council wants to raise the levy at all. Okay. If they don't, then we have to chisel that amount out and bring it back. Okay. Well, and this leads, um, I think, to just one of the, the sort of the ongoing saga and is, is actually moving along, as you promised when you were running it would, is, is the construction or the, the authorization for the construction of our police station. Bring us up to date as to where we're at and uh, ideas or your timeline and how you think all of this might, might, might well, work out. Well, the word out. is that the city council has struggled for 40 years to build a new police station. <laughs> <laughs> and that also includes picking a site. Yep, yep. We've done it. We picked the site. The council selected a site. And that's very key. It's very important because it really brings some of the finality to the whole process. And the site that was selected was next to City Hall, north of City Hall, between the existing uh, central police station and City Hall, in the back of City Hall, I should say. And that's where the uh, new police station is going to go. That that's looks like important. a really small area to me. Yes, it does. But uh, if you were to take City Hall, if you were to demolish City Hall and clean it up, that little lot will look very small, too. You can put a lot of building on what's yeah. there. OK. You can All put right. a lot of, I've seen huge buildings taken down and you go back and take a look at that lot and you say, how in the world did that building fit there? It does. And I think that's what people are going to be amazed at. Mm -hmm. We're going to be able to put a really neat police station there that's going to be very adequately uh, uh, providing the needs of our police department. Yeah, there's a lot of room back there. Okay. There is a lot of room. I well, mean, and I think it's a, up to the you can go up to the fire station. If right. You had to, yeah. I, and I think it's a good I think it's a good location it's too. Centralized. Yeah. And it's going to save us another million million and a half uh, approximately because we own the land already. All right. So how much is it going to cost, and how are we going to pay for it? What would you like for it to cost? <laughs> <laughs> Zero. <laughs> <laughs> On a good day, any amount. On a bad day, which is what we're dealing with, my estimation will be anywhere between eight and ten million dollars. And, and let me answer that. I mean, that's a good question. And, and um, there was discussion, and I know we're talking about apples and oranges, but the Janesville. Um, uh, police station that was recently constructed, as I understand it, at about a $4.8 million cost. Janesville being relatively similar in size uh, to, to Sheboygan, I think um, demographically maybe a little tougher area, I'm not sure, but um, uh, I mean they have layoffs and you know, economic hard times in Janesville as well as good times. Uh, I also understand that police station doesn't have a dispatch center like um, we would need to have. Mm -hmm. So it's not exactly analogous, but is something in the range of $5 million a, a possibility for our, for our I folks? I don't think so. We'd, okay. be, we'd be shortchanging our police department too okay. much. Okay. Uh, there's just some things that, you know, as, as, as 
time as time goes by, changes that are that are being made and, and, and the state requirements and federal requirements, just so many things that are happening. I wouldn't recommend even five million dollars. That'd be not enough. Okay. All right. Do you have has the designer been selected? Sure, in Zimmerman. Zimmerman, so, and uh, are there any preliminary plans for the current uh, site? Not, well, there's, there were preliminary plans, but they're going to have to all be looked at again because they were not designed to put it next to City Hall. I've got a meeting scheduled next week with, the, uh, with Zimmerman, my finance director, myself, and the th three chiefs, deputy chiefs, and uh, Chief Kirk. And we'll yeah. be looking at that. Yeah. The next step, actually, it'll eventually end up in Build a News Committee, which is where it should have been in the first place. But that's where it was the last time it became a real contentious issue. Mm -hmm. and that's what caused all, all the problems. So I pulled it out of the building use committee and suggested it go to committee of the whole where everybody got to talk. When we're done, we're done, folks. We've mm -hmm. decided everybody had their shot at the uh, bite of the apple, and let's move on. Now it can go back to com uh, building use committee where it should be so that they can look and, uh, at the, and, at the uh, site uh, and everything site, else. Uh, yeah. Look at all the details. Do we really need that many bathrooms? Do we really need that many windows? Do we need this? Do we need that? Maybe we need this. Maybe we need that. They need to look at all those Wait, things. One one floor just all the way out, all the way across maybe. Sure. That adds a quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Has anybody uh, looked at when you go to a satellite police station uh, concept? As you go into bigger cities, you know, many of your wards and so on have small storefronts where people have, can w literally walk in and find an officer mm -hmm. uh, available to them uh, rather than centralization. I just think of the city growing, particularly continuing to grow probably south. At w some point, you're going to have a geographic distance that uh, we do that with, with fire. You know, mm -hmm. we, mm -hmm. we sort of decentralize the operation. And that, that notion was, was brought about several times, but it never gained a lot of popularity. Uh, and Sheboygan maybe isn't to that point of, of right. size yet, mm -hmm. but eventually many cities find that you need to do that because of the geographic distance from the edge of the city to where the city hall is just by right. the growth that's incurred. And we may have all to that point. I yeah. just don't think that right now people felt that we were yeah. at that point, or enough people didn't feel that okay. way. Mm -hmm. Eight million dollars, where does it come from? If we, if we look at the chart, we're... It's, gonna, it's either going to be a 20-year uh, bond or 10-year float tenure uh, notes, maybe a combination. We don't know yet. We're still talking about that. What's the best way to do it? Okay. All right. And the whole plan will be in place and the financing by about what time do you expect? Well, if things go going at, at the pace that they're going, it'll be towards the end, very end of 06 or the very beginning of 07, the ground will be broken. And then okay. it takes about a year, maybe less than a year and a half. to. to they go out pretty quick. Okay. They're built very strong. I mean, these things have to be built a certain way. Uh, there's a lot of things that are being mandated, as I said. I'm, right now, we're being mandated to have surveillance cameras uh, when we do interrogations. The state has mandated that, mm -hmm. but they don't provide money for it. So that money's got to come from somewhere again, mm -hmm. and we have to provide it. That's and that that's, pesky court system. And that's, <laughs> <laughs> well, but you know, it's, it's for our own good. Oh, I just, absolutely. I just wish we had the money to do it. Right. Yeah. I mean, it protects the city from liability, and it protects the... Uh, uh, the perpetrator of uh, any violation of a crime, too. Sure, sure. Um, you've been in office how many days? Four months. It feels like four years, and I'll show you scars. <laughs> 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 I'm well, what in. good things have you've been, <laughs> Besides you've, putting in about 12, 13 hours right. a day. It won't be 13 hours a day, but generally it's a 12-hour day. Yeah, and you, you're just kind of moving like a whirlwind here. Uh, That's and all I hear. And all sorts of things have been happening in the city. Um, I think... Uh, the Chamber of Commerce uh, contract issue has certainly been an interesting one. Mm -hmm. uh, you've, ha you've, gotten, you've taken some, some nicks on that one. Um, do you think it's still a, and you cast the, the deciding vote, uh, good decision? Uh, how are things moving in terms of, of the city uh, with respect to that? Well, I think, I think it's going to move in, in, in a good direction. And if, and if anything else, if it ever comes to a point where we'd like to contract with the Chamber again, there's, there's a, a system put in place that we can just hand over that I think they would very much appreciate to, to, to take over. But the whole notion of the city doing it in-house came from a difference in philosophy uh, and a difference in how the county-wide effort to promote and develop tourism was being handled. Let me explain. The philosophy of the Sheboygan County Chamber of Commerce is to promote the county first and foremost and hopefully people will find themselves into Sheboygan. 
the other philosophy is promote Sheboygan first, and the people will ultimately find themselves into the county. That was a ph philosophical difference. The, the difference in the amount of money that was put into the Sheboygan County, or uh, Sheboygan County Chamber of Commerce, if you look at Elkhart Lake, Elkhart Lake has their own Chamber of Commerce. Who do they promote? Elkhart Lake. How much money do they get to Sheboygan County Chamber of Commerce? Not one penny. Kohler has a Chamber of Commerce. Who do they promote? Kohler. How much money do they give to Sheboygan County Chamber? Not one penny. They collect over $3 million. Don't share any. Falls the same way. Plymouth the same way. West Bend, that nobody hears about it's in Sheboygan County. Same thing. They all have their own Chamber of Commerce. They all, they all, all promote themselves only, and they don't give any amount in an equal basis to the Sheboygan Chamber of Commerce. Until that's done, I think the city of Sheboygan cannot come to the table and say, let's begin talking. And if the chamber wants a visitor center, which was, I think, they were depending on your revenues to help them do that, a session to Elkhart Lake, Plymouth, Kohler would be probably the route to go in order to, to truly make it a facility that everybody pays for. Exactly. But we were told that not one penny from our room tax from the city of Sheboygan was going to be used to build that visitor center. So where that notion came from later on, I don't know, but not one penny was going to be used for that. All right. And I understand that the city is in, um, and there's been some criticism about using some of the room tax money for, for salaries. Um, for salaries. For the, um, the city is intending to hire a couple of people to uh, do the work. That How else would you do it? I well, mean, you'd have to hire somebody. But I believe if we look at the numbers, we're going to be spending less in salaries than it was actually being spent when it was being handled by the chamber. Yeah, I mean, presumably the chamber was using money for salaries, and, and too. And I need to say, though, that... You know, somebody referred to it as lip talk. And I can see why they would want to do that, but the relationship between the chamber and the city did not end. Nobody put an end to that. It was a contract that was not renewed. Now that may surface again, we don't know. Is it good? Maybe. Is it not? I don't know. There's a lot of things that have to be worked out before that would happen, but the relationship is still there, and we're hoping, I mean, we've already um, bought two of the big ads, full page ads, I believe, to, to participate in, in, their, in their program. We're just not providing most of the funding for them just as the other count, the other cities aren't either. I think it's gonna be really exciting too. Uh, um, uh, so many uh, businesses, uh, profit, non-profits, law firms, everyone is going through these branding processes, you know, finding the, the right tagline, finding the right logo, really, fixing in the public's mind who you are, what you do, and, and so forth. And I think that there is some potential uh, for the city if it, if it uses that room tax money in a pretty powerful way to really publicize a city that's on a lake. And from my perspective, there's no more beautiful lakefront along the west coast of, of Lake Michigan than, than Sheboygan. Manitowoc, Kiwani, Algoma, I, I don't know about Racine and Kenosha, but I mean, those are nice, but they don't have the beautiful accessibility that our, our lakefront has, I think, and people want to be on the water. It's just one of those things, so. I was looking at some photos, aerial photographs, and photos from being in the lake looking in. Sheboygan is a beautiful community. It is a very beautiful community. We're not marketing ourselves. We're marketing something else, hoping to ride the tale of somebody else. I don't know that, that we need to do that. We're big I, enough. You know, I, I, I disagree. I know you, you disagree, disagree with, with me. I was waiting I mean, for that. <laughs> I, I, sure, I, you know, I would contact the Shaboy. I would contact the Chamber of Commerce as I'm going to visit some place to see what to go visit and what to do. And uh, when you think of uh, Sheboygan, uh, we've had a lot of nice things happen that got marketed. I don't know how they got marketed, but. I don't know who was the city, but you had a great place uh, to raise a family, low crime. Uh, uh, what was another one? A tree City. We've been Tree City designated. Uh, there's been several things that that get marketed and night get in the magazines nationwide. Now, I don't know if that's the chamber has done that, but somebody's done that. I don't know if the city has done that. But see, I would just I would just uh, if I were going to a city, I would go to the look up the Chamber of Commerce online and say, "What do you got here?" Now I'm going to have to go to the city webpage and then got to go to the chamber webpage. I don't know. It seems like duplication of services to me. <laughs> well, and, and if it is, that, that needed to be. It's good. We've got some controversy <laughs> finally. It's just been just and way and too and pleasant if it here. Is, it needed to be addressed with the other chamber of commerce as they were reaping off some of the benefits of the money that we were contributing to a county effort. 
That's all I'm saying. I think it should be done in a fair and equitable way. You know, they want two hundred and ninety thousand dollars from the city of Sheboygan. Let's have Kohler do the same thing. Running they, out they'd of hear none of yeah, it. running out of time. Some good things. Uh, the, it's so nice to Michigan, have Michigan Avenue. We just cut the ribbon from Michigan Avenue. It's a wonderful street now. The merchants are happy. It was a difficult, inconvenient time. I think a lot of them uh, claim that they lost some money. I would understand if they did. Um, they bear with us. I mean, they, they were there with us, and, and they understood. Now it's open. They love it. Uh, all we need to do is plant trees now. Lights are on. Yeah, and it looks real nice. Saturday was a, a walk to Michigan Avenue day, and there was, a, mm -hmm. there was a lot of people there, a lot of people. That's great. That's and, of course, great. you uh, spoke at the uh, groundbreaking for the Hmong, the Lao Hmong American Veterans Memorial. That was a wonderful, and wonderful. it was groundbreaking summer. physically and groundbreaking symbolically because that's the only, the second of, any of them that are exist in the United States right now. Yeah, and it's a beautiful monument. Uh, Dean Hernandez yeah, so uh, has. He, he actually, there, well, not only that, he actually designed it. Uh, oh, yeah, the, he an, art, he's a, an artist. He is artist. an artist, and it's a beautiful design. And I was just struck. I was there uh, by the um, compatibility of the the thought of the monument and the and the site. It was just one of those beautiful, windy, sunny mornings, and. Um, really recognizing what all the veterans did and their families and how people have come back to the community. I mean, it's, it's gone way beyond just a war memorial. There's a great sense of camaraderie, I, I felt. I mean, yeah. we just, we're here and we're together. This is a pretty awesome feeling. Yeah. But we're all different, a lot of us. Yeah, so, so elections are coming up. We should make a pitch to the citizens, although those of us who ran for office always like not to be opposed. <laughs> One of the things we've talked about is that there are so many elections that are not contested anymore <clears throat> because of money or the, the power of the incumbency, but people will start taking nomination papers out in November for eight of the Actually, city. Actually, December 1st. They can December 1st, that's correct. Thank you. Uh, December 1st uh, and uh, for, uh, for uh, the city, city council, council and, school and, board. and school board. And so the county board. And the county, board, county is board is up in its entirety, I think, this year. Half of them go. Okay. Yeah, is that just in half. the fall or the... the these are, this is an April election. municipal or always spring. Right. But the county is a different. Yeah. Time, no, it? we're all no, together. So just the courthouse people. Time who are to say goodbye. Hardison, are in fall. We hard to stop talking. Thanks for joining us, Mayor. We appreciate it. Thanks. Thanks for having me.